The True Light, featuring Es Sayyid El Imam Isa El Hadi El Mahdi. I would like to ask about um, Luke 23:43, where um, it says that Jesus said unto him, "Verily I say unto thee, to, today thou shalt be with me in paradise." I know that it says that um, Judas was made to look like Jesus, but did Judas say this to um, to the um, thief that was next to him? Here's the point. The answer, first of all, is if it's not in the book of John, don't believe it. <laughs> the reason why I say that is because the Christians acknowledge that John is the receiver of the book of Revelation. You follow? Now the two books we're talking about, which is, of course, John and book of Revelation, are the last two books to be revealed. We got one being revealed in the year 96, and the other being revealed in the year 98. We start talking about Luke and them, people do not know that Luke didn't even receive his own book. Matthew's received it for Luke. The year is 56 to 58. You follow that? He was one of Paul's followers, which 2 Timothy 4.11 confirms. His book, now let's just look at Luke for a starting, so we'll know what we're up against, okay? Luke chapter 1. Let's see what it says. Verse 1. Are you with it? For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth an order of declaration of those things which most surely believed amongst us, he says, when, I, when you turn this back to English, just as other people have taken upon themselves to write the things that we believe, you understand? Number two, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses, they was back in the beginning the people who saw it, and ministers of the word, and they were out teaching the word. He's talking about these same people. Now I know that he says in number three. Read it for me, sister. It says, it seemed to me, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things, from the very first to write unto thee in order, most excellent, um, Theophilus. 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 Now, is he saying that this is a revelation from heaven? Or did he just say, he decided to write this because everybody else was writing books? Listen to this man. Listen to what Luke just said. Well, everybody else wrote a book, and they were there, and they preached with Christ. But me, I am perfect in my what? Understanding. He never met Christ, but he perfectly understands what Christ said. Now I ask you again. Should we believe what Luke says? According to Luke himself, he got an ego that won't wait. Listen to this. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first. How can he have perfect understanding of all things from the very first and he wasn't there? He never saw Jesus in the flesh. He never walked with Jesus. He wasn't in the upper room. He never broke no bread. He wasn't on the sea. How can he have perfect knowledge? This is what Christians do. They get up there and they use words like perfect knowledge and understanding when they don't even know what they're talking about. Now this man took it upon himself to write a book. And the Christians swear by the book of Luke. And they quote Luke to us. Anything that is not mentioned in John about Jesus, don't trust it. Why? Because if you go to Revelation 21, let's see what he says about this book. Because Revelation chapter 1 says, this is the book of Revelation, which Allah has what? Given unto who? For to show what? Read Revelation chapter 1. Um, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, uh -huh. to shew unto his servants things which must, must shortly come to pass. And sent it and signified it by? By his angel. Now this to his to a servant. Who? John. Hey. Now this revelation says God gave it to Jesus, but he sent it by an angel to John. Is this a revelation from Allah? According to this, of course. Would this be a divine revelation? Yes. Wouldn't this put this above the book of Luke? Yes. Out the window in Luke. Right. Let's look at what the Bible said. The very Bible they read tells me that John was inspired by way of an angel from the Heavenly Father to do his book. Huh? The days are over for them lies and them gimmicks. 
And if you look at the same book of Revelation, let's go to the last chapter, chapter 22, and let's go to the 18th verse, and it says what? For, what? No. For I testify... Unto every man that hears the word... Y'all can read together, ain't nothing wrong with that. For I testify... Unto every man that hears the words of the prophecies of this book. Stop. Put the emphasis where it belongs. On the prophecies of uh, this book. Not Matthews. Not Mark. Not Luke. Not Corinthians. Not Philippines. Not Hebrews. Not Paul's books. But this book. This is what we call the Evangel. Which we translate in El Quran as El Injil. The Evangel, El Injil. The book of Revelation is the Injil, not the New Testament. You Muslims stop fooling people and stop confusing people. Only the book of Revelation is the Injil, not the New Testament. We make a fool out of ourselves when we say the New Testament is the, is the NGO that has all these contradictions and mistakes in it. Then we have to answer why did Allah sanction it after it was tampered with? Why would He sanction the NGO in the Quran and the Bibles prior to the Quran was already tampered with? Because the book of Revelation was not tampered with because they didn't understand the apocalypse of it, the message in it. They left it. But they couldn't translate the meanings. The symbolism was too complicated. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that was going to happen. Because he knew the explanation of it couldn't come until after the seal of the prophets came, Muhammad, with the Quran, the seal of the scriptures. Then when that knowledge was put here, then men would be able to understand the Quran before the end of the world. Let's go on and see what it says. 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man, not God, not angel. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall what? Add unto him. The plagues are written in this book. Now let's go to our perfect number to seal it. And if any man shall take away from the words of, of the book of this, this prophecy. prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city called the New Jerusalem of course and from the things which are written in this book right that's the confirmation of the book of Revelation no and this is the same John who received the book of John not the book of James or letters of James not the book of Hebrew not the book of Philemon not Thessalonians not Timothy not Galatians, not Hebrew, not Corinthians, not Romans, not none of those books written by men, not the Acts, but the book of John. And if you read the book of John, you get the story of Jesus. And I've translated the whole book from the original language, verse by verse, and you'll find when you get past the 18th chapter, they've inserted the name Jesus where they just said He. When they said they came to take Him, they said they came to take Jesus. His name wasn't in the original manuscripts. He said he, he transformed himself. And he got placed in here where Jesus eludes people because he looks other than himself. And it throws people off. They get confused because he had the power to transform himself to look other than himself. It tells you in the Bible multiple places where he transformed himself. And one of them you find right in the same book we're in, St. John's, Chapter 21, verse 1, he shows people how he transforms himself. Right in front of them. Read it? Yes, you can if you want to. After these, after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise, he showed himself. Notice why they word that. This is how he showed himself. On this wise, he showed himself. Now go on and notice what they mean. He showed himself. They looked at him, but they did not recognize him. Go ahead. They were together, Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus, and Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his, of his disciples. Simon Peter said, said unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. 
and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have you any meat? They answered him, No. And he said, Did you make note that they didn't recognize Jesus so far? They looked right at Jesus and they didn't recognize him? Because he just said, this is how he's going to show himself. But on this wise showed he himself. Go ahead. Notice they could not recognize him. Remember, this was Jesus who supposed to die for their sins. Who suffered on the cross for them. Who was in the bowels of the earth three days and three nights. Who was God incarnate, the Son of God. But here they are looking right at him and they don't recognize him. Please someone tell us why. Go ahead. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship and ye shall find... Make note that Jesus has the power here to make fish commit suicide. See, the Christians have a way to make it look the other way. Jesus made the fish multiply. He made fish commit suicide. That's what he just did. He had the power to order fish to jump into a net so their destination would be a piece of bread. That's the power. That's some, that's some power from heaven there. But it says in the Quran that Allah had supported Jesus with his word and with his Holy Spirit. Jesus had the power to perform miracles. Nobody takes that away from him. As long as he did it in Allah's name and not his own. Go ahead. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fish's coat unto him, for he was naked, and he did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciple came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon and bread. Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which you have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, and a hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus said unto them, Come and dine. None of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. That means they looked at him, but they didn't dare ask him, Is he Jesus? They knew it was him, by the way, things he did, but they didn't recognize him. I'm just going to give you a list of other quotes. Matthew 17.2 Somebody turn to it. John 21.1 Someone turn to it. And now Mark 9.2 Now these are all of them. And notice John is the one we're going to listen to. Or you can look at the same book she asked, Luke 9.29 going to tell you right there that Jesus had the power to transform himself to look other than himself. Then when we go to the Holy Quran in the 4th chapter and the 157th verse it's going to confirm it because Allah is going to use a word in there that Muslims in Arabic know should be which is sheen beh ha which means looks like if I said you look like them I said huwa tasbi mifla huwa huwa yasbi mifla huwa he looks like him or you look like him the word shabba means to look like to look like somebody else you understand not like, like the word Mithla. Not like in action. He acts like him. No. You got one of them? No. Which one? Matthew 17, verse 2. Read it. And was, and was transfigured before them. Who was? Jesus. And? And? He, and as he prayed. I'm reading the one in Luke. And as, this is Luke chapter 9, verse 29. Wow. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering and between it tells you that these are two different statements don't let a Christian say yes that's me that means he made himself turn glistering white well if Jesus had the power to turn himself to look glistering white he had the power to change the way he looks but it tells you right there his countenance was what? altered it says right there and he prayed and the fashion of his countenance. Now let's go back to Genesis if we want to understand fashioning. What did he say? Did he what? Fashion man in his image. Is he talking about his spirit or he's talking about his body? What is he talking about? He said man is fashioned like him. Allah is called Al Musawir, the fashioner. You follow what I'm saying? Jesus' countenance was changed. 
Jesus had the power to make himself look like other than himself right in front of people. This is what your Bible says, Christian world. This is what the Quran supports and backs up. Read another one, John 21.1. The, after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed he himself. This is how he showed himself. Mark 9.2, someone. And after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John, and leadeth them up into a high mountain apart uh -huh. by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. What happened to him? Transfigured before them. Does anybody know what the word transfigured means? Huh? Does anyone, anybody have any idea what the word trans? Does anybody have a dictionary? Not a Christian Bible dictionary. A regular dictionary. What does it say? The word transfigured? It means... Some, someone else look up the word transformed. I have the word transfigured. What kind of dictionary are you reading? That's important, see, because the white man says it is true. So let's know what the white man says. I have a <laughs> Webster's Dictionary. Oh, that's true. <laughs> what does it say? To change outward appearance. To change what? Outward appearance. So we ain't talking about no light coming outside of Jesus. We're talking about the way Jesus looked outwardly speaking. Unless Webster's wrong or the Bible's wrong. And if, uh, according, according to y'all who worship the white man, facts is facts. As I say it, truth is truth. You understand what I'm saying? Jesus had the power to transform himself. Turn your holy Quran to the fourth chapter, the 157th verse. And for their saying and boast, verily we have slain the Messiah, Jesus, Son of you Mary. Notice the word, inna katalanna. See that? El Messiah Isa ibn Maryam Rasulullah. And it says for them saying that they killed. Killed. See that? No. What about it? Verily we have slain the Messiah, Jesus son of Mary, the apostle of God. They what? Wama. But they slew Katalahu. him not. Wama. And they crucified Salabahu. him not. They did not kill him, nor did they have him up on a cross. The Quran makes a distinction between dying and being crucified. Because a lot of Muslims, like Ahmadid and them, think that Jesus was on the cross like David and taken down alive. Because they have the stories of the Talmud mixed up. Because the Jews tricked them. This Quran teaches us that Jesus was not crucified, meaning on any cross, nor did he die. You understand? There's a difference. Go on, what does it say after that? Well, that can but it became, became dubious unto them. And but it made to look like that for them. Lahum. You see that? No. You know what it tells you about them? What well, Arabic word they're going to use is Azani. Azani means uh, Azunu. I think so. If you say, uh, Isa, did you see Abdul Malik? I say, oh, Azunu. Who are kind of to He was in his house, I think. <laughs> That's what it says. And right here in the Quran, they use the same thing. What does it say? And indeed, those who differ therein are only in doubt about it. They have no knowledge about the real matter. They don't know. What they do is what? Pursuing only a conjecture. And that word they have for conjecture means I think in Arabic. Not I think like in thinking, but I think like in I think so. It could be. And when you read this Bible and start reading about the crucifixion of Christ and see all the contradictions, you realize that people like Luke and them said, I think so. I think I know. I'm not really sure. None of them are sure what happened. Who was there? Who was there? Peter and John. And in Peter's book, he don't talk about it. So what book should you listen to? Whose book should we listen to? Did Mary Magdalene write a book? Who else was there? Peter? No. And? John. Did Peter write about it in his book? No. Was Matthew there? No. Was Luke there? No. Was James there? No. Was Paul there? No. So of course, as the Quran teaches us, all they have is conjecture. All they do is think they know what they're talking about. 
because they didn't see it. And the man who wrote the story was John. So I tell Muslims, read the book of John. I tell Christians, according to your writing, in the book of Revelation, John is the person who received the revelation from the angel for Jesus, so we can listen to him. And then according to your book, John chapter 1, let's go back and see what it says. John chapter 1, verse 1, he says, In the beginning was the word. In the beginning was this word, and this word was in and Allah, in possession of Allah. Allah. And this word was Allah. What is this word? This word is kun. Kun. Kun fire kun. Allah merely says to a thing, come into existence, and into existence it comes. Don't let anybody say be and it is. That's not no translation. Kun means to exist from Cohen universe. In the beginning he created a whole universe. And into that universe he placed everything. Because when he said to Mary to have a baby, he merely said kun, fire kun. And he took that angel and transformed him into a human being. And he went into Mary. And she conceived. It says right in Holy Quran chapter 19 that he gave her a baby. 1919 to be exact. Couldn't be any more perfect than that. He used the word wahaba. The Arabic word wahaba means to give somebody something physically. Go ahead, y'all. Okay, um, my next question is um, from Genesis 2 7. Where, um, where did you get it? Okay, it says, And the Lord formed man of, of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils and the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And um, I know throughout the scriptures it does speak of um, humans as being souls. So I would like to know how, how can someone live without a soul? All right. Because what happens is you have in the Hebrew language soul and spirit. Just like we have in the Holy Quran, we have the word soul, ruh, and the word spirit, nafsa. The word spirit, nafsa, if I said nafsi, would not just mean spirit, but it would also mean myself. You follow? Now in the Torah, they use nefesh. That's the Hebrew of our word nafsa. And they will use the word ruh or rish for the Arabic form ruh, soul. In here, it says that Allah breathed into man of his soul and man became a living spirit. The translators, because when they got to Latin, didn't have a different word for soul and spirit. The Greeks didn't have a different word for soul and spirit. They used it, uh, what do you call it, as the same word. The way most English speaking people do, even though there's a clear difference between a soul and a spirit, most English speaking people say, Soul and spirit. No. Spirit is hayat. It's a word for person existing things. The word soul is from the word wind. Why wind? Because the scripture says that the heavenly father did what? He blew into man of the breath of life. And the same word for blow, ruh, from rish, is the same word for ruh, soul. So what came from Allah was ruh, the wind of his life. And when it settled in man, man became alive. And when man inherited emotions, man becomes like Allah, a living soul. You follow? Mm -hmm. So what happens is, anything that's alive has a spirit. A human being could lay in a hospital, go into a coma, be alive. You follow that? But have no emotions. That means their soul has left, but their spirit is still there. You, on the other hand, may have woken up one morning from a deep sleep. You was alive. Your eyes was open, but your body wouldn't move. And panic set in. You say, oh my God, I'm dying. <laughs> You can't move, you're just laying there, you hear people talking in the next room, you can feel the presence of something on you, and you, out of fear, you pull your soul back in your body, because your soul leaves your body every night for the recording of your deeds. But the spirit stays there as long as you're alive. When Jesus was talking about the angels, he was calling them holy souls. Translators call them Holy Spirit. It said, Ruhu Qudus. 
in the ancient language. Not Ruhun Nasa. <laughs> you see that? And when a person has rhythm and can dance, they say, the boy got soul. You follow what I'm saying? When a person gets down, they say he's a soul man. <laughs> they call James Brown the soul man. Let me make something clear about James Brown, because a lot of these young rap groups talk about James Brown as if he wasn't responsible for them. The moonwalk that Michael Jackson did, James Brown did. The steps of sliding across the stage that Princess, I mean Prince, that Prince does, James Brown did. The splits that Fourth MD and New Edition and all them are doing, James Brown did. You follow what I'm saying? So 90% of the dancing that the white man is praising today came from one man, James Brown. You know what I'm saying? Soul is something that makes me and you able, like I got to say many times, to take an oatmeal box and turn it into a drum. Sit on a stoop and just be banging. Take a toilet paper ring, hope I didn't offend nobody who, who doesn't want to face reality, <laughs> and turn it into a horn. Be blowing, ah, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. and white people look at that and say, look at this. Nigga took a milk crate, a block of wood, and a pair of skates and made a scooter. <laughs> now y'all don't realize why people freak out over stuff like that. Y'all think they just go by and say, my God, look at that. <laughs> Actually, he sits in his car and he said, these people did build the pyramids. Yeah. These people did build a the sphinx. These people built the White House, in fact. What am I talking about? <laughs> y'all ain't free. All y'all did is reach back into the foul cabinet of your soul and y'all brought back things that we were doing before you were born and now y'all think y'all created something. It would be better if you can tell the white man we got this from our elders. No, but you want to make it yours. You can count on that. We'll do that. Instead of saying, no, nah, we ain't disregarding James Brown because we got hit records on James Brown. No, we ain't. No, we know that Oscar Brown Jr. and them was scatting and rapping before we were. And I know that, you know, Prince ain't learning nothing. He ain't doing nothing but the James Brown and the moonwalk. But see, they couldn't give that glory to James Brown because Fred Astaire and them was out during that time. They had to wait for theirs to die so there wouldn't be no competition. I don't know if you understand what I mean. They couldn't give James Brown the credit for the kind of creative dancer he was in his time because they had too many white dancers out there emulating blacks. But Michael Jackson, he was white, so he was all right. He cut his nose off, he cut his chin off, he cut his... He cut his eyes off. He took all of the... He did the same thing Napoleon did in Africa, in Egypt, to all the statues, cut the noses off and everything to look white. Well, he didn't need Napoleon. Michael Jackson went and became white by white people. So that, that's why they made him a god. So sister, soul is something we have white people do not have. They have a spirit. They are alive. But they don't have any soul. And if you don't believe me, put on a record and tell them to dance. <laughs> and watch them turn a very serious thing into a joke. <laughs> Let me tell you something else. Out of all the music in the whole world, of every country and every culture, there's not but one music that has no drum. You know what that is? The white man's classical music. Every place else you go, whether it's China, Japan, Malaysia, India, Africa, any place where there's people of color, you will find the drum. Why? Because the white man says the drum is the heartbeat. It's the soul of the music. So white people created a kind of music without a beat and without a soul. And when you look at them white boys and white girls on television now dancing and singing like blacks, I'm telling you as a person who has a recording studio, if it wasn't for a sink, if it wasn't for a metrodome put inside drum machines, white people would be lost. All they're doing is sampling what black people are doing and duplicating it. If you take away them sampling machines and them middies and remove those drum machines, whites will be back to doing the holly gully and not being able to dance at all. The fact that you are teaching them how to dance, the man, the white man is so shrewd, he set up the aerobics. And the aerobics, you know what the aerobics was? Blacks teaching whites rhythm. You thought, you thought they were exercising, didn't you? They were going left, right, left, right, left, right, right. One, two, one, two, raise your hand, move your hips, step, kick, nothing but the bus stop. It was the bus stop when we did it, it became aerobics when, when Jane Fonda, started doing it, all of a sudden now it becomes a robust. But when we was doing it, it was the bus stop. 
If I would have did a, a video of the bus stop, Whitey would have never put it out. <laughs> you understand the devil? You understand what you're dealing with? We got something the man can't have. Don't give him your soul. That's all you got left. He then took everything else. We ain't got nothing else but each other. And you know what I'm going to do right now. You all that know me, you know exactly what I'm getting ready to say right now, don't you? I'm getting ready to say, anybody that's sitting in that room next to somebody and they've been sitting there as hot as it is and don't know them ought to be ashamed of themselves. There's somebody sitting next to you, you know, and he's your brother, and he's suffering also. And the white man has done the same things to him or her that he's done to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? At least introduce yourselves to the people sitting around you. We're going to take a coffee break, as y'all call it. Decaffeinated, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and I want everybody in there to introduce themselves to each other. I think y'all should exchange numbers, stay in touch, because we got something in common. Either you came here to prove me wrong, which you will not be able to do, so you might as well forget it. Or you came here because you want to know the truth. And if it's the second one, then watch y'all break for one minute and get to know each other. Come on, this is family time. We are all we got. We don't have nobody else but ourselves. And we better learn to love each other. Because don't nobody else care about us, that's for sure. What y'all are doing right now is the devil's worst nightmare. Communication. Because you're going to find out some brother that may have a business that you can go buy from. Or some sister that makes clothes and we can buy from her. Or somebody who sells something we can exchange. We can find out how we can help each other. We all need people. But all, I'm saying we are a family. Right? Go ahead, sister. You can ask the brother your question. Okay. Um, my last question is in the Mati banner. Is it is the color red in the Mati banner? Can you repeat that, please? Yes, the color the red. Color now, red. let me make something clear to you. In the Sudan, we usually recognize it as orange. Right? All right? But the color red is there because the red symbolizes something, not evil, but something that was evilly perpetrated against us, which resulted in our bloodshed. But now I want you to make note of something. Notice that the Mahdi had black first. And this didn't come from Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey got his flag from us. Because the Mahdi was born before Marcus Garvey. So that red, black, and green flag that's been used in this country was the Mahdi's flag in Sudan in the 18th century, before Marcus Garvey was born, okay? Okay. Notice how he put black first. Because when the British came to Africa, there was red, black, and green. When the battle was over, he made the flag black, red, and green. He said he put his nation of people first because they will never bleed again if he can help it. You understand? Uh -huh. The blood was first originally. The blood, red, black, the people, and then Mother Africa. The Mahdi changed it around. He said, no, it's black, the people first. Then the blood that was shed for Mother Africa. And we will never bleed again. And when we become a powerful nation here, if you're listening to me, we're going to go home and help Africa. You understand? Okay. We're going to take South Africa and restore it to who it belongs to. That's our job. And if the South Africans don't want our help, we'll still take it and give it to them. Because that's our job. We have to go home and help our brothers and sisters. Stop trying to become Americans. Because of God, how much American you want to be, your nose ain't going to let you be white anyway. <laughs> and you can't shadow out that nose. You can blush it. You can brush it. You can stretch it, you can paint it, but after that, when you take a bath, you're still an African. You ain't gonna look white regardless of what you try to do. You can put all the white powder on, and then let me see you go swimming and stay looking like that. <laughs> you are African people, and we have an obligation to use the information that we have attained while here incarcerated to help Mother Africa. Do you all understand that? Stop helping ourselves to everything. We got to start thinking about helping our homeland. Let me tell you something. The white man tells you to go back to Africa. He's telling you a big, bold-faced lie. If all the blacks want, if the white man believes that, why they stop Marcus Garvey? Ain't no way in the world. The last thing in the world the white man wants is me and you to leave America and go back to Africa. Don't you know that all of the natural resources in Mother Africa... Now, I say this, but this is not for the old timers. What I'm going to say now is for the new people, okay? The new visitors. I want you to think about this now. I want you to really dwell on this. Diamonds, 
gold, platinum, onyx, ivory, all of the natural resources that make up the wealth of the world are found in Africa, including oil. Yes or no? Yes. Say yes. just say yes if it's true. Yes. All right. Now you don't find this in Europe, do you? No. Now, who makes diamonds, man or the Creator? Who makes oil, man or the Creator? Who makes gold, man or the Creator? Who makes platinum, man or the Creator? Who makes onyx, man or the Creator? Who makes ivory, man or the Creator? So who did the Creator love the most, us or Europeans? <laughs> Somewhere along the line, we get away. The Heavenly Father entrusted me and you with all the natural resources in the world. He intended for us to be the richest people on the planet. And here we are, the poorest, the lowest of the low, receiving welfare money for money coming out of our mother country. And he wouldn't have no money if he didn't have gold. A white man can't even get married without African sanctioning. Because he has a policy that he must give a woman a gold ring and a diamond. It's called engaged. And then he can have sex. So without that engagement ring, without my Africa, the white man would have no, no woman. <laughs> Another thing I want to say. You know what that is? If the Pope and the Christian church is so right, are you with me? Yeah. How come ain't no oil in the Vatican? <laughs> How come the Almighty gave it to the Arabs for Islam? He didn't give it to the Christians, to the Pope, or Jimmy Swagger, or Jim Baker. They got to go steal from their congregations to get rich. The Arabs were living over in the desert. They didn't even know how to brush their teeth. And oil popped up out the ground, and now they're the richest people in the world. Right? Now you know that's another part of the world that's supposed to be ours. Because the Holy Quran tells you those desert Arabs are the biggest phonies you ever want to meet. That's also our oil, but we didn't listen to the Mahdi in 1845. And we would have went back as a Hadith taught and conquered Mecca with a black flag, like the, like the Prophet taught, but we didn't listen. We opposed him because he was black. And now we're back here, still in America, on welfare, working for the white man. And then comes the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Let me go back before him. Then comes Noble Juali, with step one to our cure and we reject him. Then comes the Honorable Elijah Muhammad with step two to our cure and we reject him. And here I am now again with step three to the cure and you're denying me. I'm not leaving out Minister Louis Farrakhan. Minister Louis Farrakhan has his mission too and me and him will work together for the betterment of our people. And the five percent nation Poor righteous teachers, we will work together for the betterment of our nation. I only require you to know one thing, and that is who the devil is. Because <laughs> if you don't know who the devil is, brother, I can't trust you. If you really think Jack Nicholson is not the devil, <laughs> now we use a capital T. The devil. If you are still under the impression that there is no the white people are not the devil, and it's in the Quran. I'm telling you, Muslims, it is in the Quran in Arabic. It tells you the white man is the devil in the Holy Quran, in the 51st chapter, in the 7th verse. It says, the man, the jinn of man, physical. And most of the Qurans y'all read, Yusuf Ali and them in the top seer, they say the devil, the devil's a man. But you don't want to believe that. And not believing that is why you're suffering. The white man is the devil. And you are the seed of Adam. And Allah has cast both of y'all in the earth to be enemies to each other. Until Yom Al-Akhri. Until the day that man is raised, Yom al to be judged, Yom al for the final decision, Yom Al-Akhri. If you don't accept that, I, don't, I can't deal with you. You going out there and do a Sammy Davis Jr. or a Ben Marine with white people all you want. I'm going to tell you, boy or girl, white man don't care nothing about you, nigga. Point blank. You can smile on your face at work just to tell his friends, there's a good colored girl at my job. She's not bad. She minds her business. She doesn't bother anybody. She's docile. She's sedate. She's a trained monkey. That's how he sees you. You're no threat to him because you're not asking for your rights. You're just asking for a right to be like him. Just accept me, Mr. Whitey. 
Let me eat in a restaurant with you. Let me go to your parties. Let me wear your style of clothes. Let me think like you, Mr. Whitey. You would think that's a very little thing for the white man to grant. But he won't give it to you. You're still the Negro or the nice Negro that he knows or the nice colored girl. Go ask the colored girl over there. Oh, sir, I didn't mean that, Mrs. Smith. The white man has no need of you because he knows how powerful you are as a people. If he gives you a position, you're going to take over. He knows it. If he gives you an opportunity, you're going to take advantage of it. He knows it. He ain't no fool because he sees how fast we populate. And he knows that by the year 2000, we will predominantly rule the world. He already knows that. That's what genocide is about. That's what AIDS is about. That's what the new wars are about. He's trying to eliminate the black man. Oh no he's not. White people are not the devils. I know a white girl on my job. She's a nice person. She's a devil. <laughs> and if she can stick you in your back, she will. You better believe it. It always takes some, out, some strange pain for you to realize the white man's a devil. But when he killed Dr. Martin Luther King, that wasn't enough pain for you, huh? Dr. Martin Luther King wasn't Malcolm X. He wasn't speaking racism. He wasn't speaking against the white man. He was speaking unity and peace and coordination and cooperation. All the things that you want to teach, right? And still the white man shot him dead. Malcolm X left the honor of Elijah Muhammad, yes? And appeared to be monotone in his doctrine, yes? He appeared to accept white people, yes? He appeared to say, when I came back from Mecca, I found out there's no racism and everybody's equal, yes? And he got killed. You say, well, black people did it, but white man gave the word. Because a Negro ain't going to pull the trigger without the word from the white man. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad did not sanction Malcolm X getting killed. That's another myth that the devil put in the air. Don't underestimate the power of your leaders. Malcolm X appeared to reform from black Muslimism according to the white man. Correct? When he was walking through Harlem and speaking and speaking about the white man, he's a devil, he's a dog, right? But the white man let him live then, didn't he? But as soon as he changed his philosophy and said, hey, there's no racism, he's dead. Isn't that something? Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught, yes, the white man on television and looked at this white man and said, you know you the devil. That's how he talks. He didn't talk like, he didn't have that New York. He said, you know you the devil. <laughs> he said, now you know you the devil. Right? <laughs> and the white man said, because if you're trying to say that all white people are the devil, he said, I'm not trying to say nothing. Allah says, all of y'all are the devil. <laughs> right? right? Did they assassinate the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? No. no. But Dr. Martin Luther King, he gets up there and says, whites and blacks need to eat together, need to work together, need to pray together. The white man said, bang! Yeah. Yeah. Now why is it that he lets Malcolm X's philosophy, prior to his conversion from the truth to darkness, he leaves him alone. As soon as he becomes a preacher of peace, he kills him. He never killed Donald Elijah Muhammad, but he killed Malcolm X. Then on the other hand, he killed Marcus Garvey. He, he deported him and had him killed. Let's follow the picture through. And he killed Noble Dwali for teaching racism. So the country must have shifted in hands. Don't be fooled. It's too late. We ain't got that much time. We better get together and start building now. Pick up where the Honorable Elijah Muhammad left off. And I'm telling you, tell them brothers and sisters that follow the Sunni Muslims that them white Muslims ain't thinking about you. Right. Right. And this is making a billion dollars an hour on oil and you ain't got one mosque in America yet built from the ground up. Yes or no? Right. How come the orthodox Muslims from Saudi Arabia and Kuwait with all that money won't build a university? And don't tell me about that little square box up on 96th Street. That thing ain't even gonna hold 2,000 blacks. That ain't, they got enough money to build all these big office buildings in Manhattan for for their uh, oil exchange, why don't they take a block and build a whole university in Mars and import teachers from Saudi and Egypt and Sudan, Quranic reciters, Arabic scholars, translators, instead of bringing in translations of the Quran, why don't they bring in men that can translate the Quran from the khutbah? So we ain't got to listen to brothers like Sarah Rahad, you don't know what he's talking about. 
who's on salary, so he's going to say anything they wanted to say. Because he stopped preaching what they say, they'll take his rent money. Them Saudi Arabians don't care nothing about us. They busy trying to be white. Chasing white women, buying yachts and transforming planes into palaces while people in South Africa are dying. People in, in, in all over uh, Ethiopia and Somalia and Kenya are starving to death while some prince has a, a yacht as a gift for his daughter. And you call that El Islam? You say that's a Muslim? That's not what Rasulullah taught us. You understand what I'm saying? All we have is each other. We got to work our way back to Mother Africa and build from there. Because when we got our feet planted on the soil that we came from, only then will we be strong. When we walking around in America, second class citizens, we'll never be nothing. When I say second class citizens, you know what I'm going to say, right? Polish American, Irish American, Jewish American, French American, Chinese American, American Negro. Notice everybody else's nationality was first except yours. American Latino. Notice everybody else's name is first, but their name but Latin is after and Negro is after. But everybody else, Polish, American, French, American, Italian, American, German, American, Latin, American, American Negro. You see that? They take the Latin family and they switch it back and forth. When they don't agree with them, then they become Spanish. You see? When they agree with him, then he's the Latinos. You understand what I'm saying? Whitey never stops his little tricks. But, his time is up. Because <laughs> we're on the rise now. Truth has come, false things must go. Truth is there. Nobody's never going to tell you Adam is white again. You see him in your mind. That's what that poster was for. Go ahead, y'all. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Um, I like to know why. Okay, like we were brought over here like in slavery and all that. I like to know why we were in slavery for so many years. And the people that were in slavery and they got away from Islam, right? Like what happens to those people? Like when they died and everything. A person cannot be judged for what they didn't know. Allah is Ar Rahmani Ar Rahim. One of his names is Al Ghafur, and another one is Al Ghafar. He's the forgiver. You follow? People before the truth came cannot be responsible. But black people in America, after 1914 on up, since the truth of El Islam has been returned to them, are now responsible for knowing it. And the reason why the black man is still in slavery is because he worships the image of the beast. And what do I mean by worships the image of the beast? He straightens his hair. He weaves white people's hair into his hair. He puts on blue contacts. He dresses like the white man. He wants to talk like the white man. He wants to live where the white man lives. He wants to eat as white people eat. He doesn't know that because he pretends he's black when he says the white man this, the white man that, and then he's doing everything he can to emulate the white man. So blacks are in slavery now because they want to stay in slavery. Because they've gotten so comfortable in the bosom of the white man they're afraid to step away and do something for themselves and Mother Africa. They're so happy working here. Jesse Jackson is so busy trying to be important here. He could be a prominent leader in Africa with his views and his understanding. And the only black leader you had that had enough sense to extend himself, I should have said only two, was Marcus Garvey and they did what to him? They killed him. And Malcolm X, who tried to set up Pan-Africanism, what they do to him? Killed they killed him. him. See, the white man is very conscious of that. If you try to break away from him and set up something with Mother Africa, they will kill the leader that tried that. You can organize inside America and be anything you want. You can be Black Panthers, you can be Young Lords, you can be Five Percenters, you can be Nation of Islam, you can be Ansar Law, you can be anything you want. But as soon as you try to make a link to Mother Africa, where you can start sending intelligent brothers over there so that we can take the degrees and information that we've attained while being imprisoned here, you follow that? And apply it home and develop our motherland, that's when the white man is concerned. He doesn't want black Muslims here teaching, meaning he doesn't like Sudanese Muslims teaching, he doesn't like Somalian Muslims teaching, he doesn't like the black, he never lets the black Egyptians in this country, and don't, most, most people don't know this, 90% of Egypt is black. He doesn't be, what he'll let in this country is blonde-haired, blue-eyed teachers, white teachers, 
They got to come out of university in Egypt and they got to be blonde hair and blue eyed. They can't even be dark skinned. You don't ever see them. Every masjid you visit in the United States when a foreign imam is there, he's always white. He's never a black skinned imam. This is all part of pre planning. Why? Because he has to keep black people in America worshipping the image of the beast. And the image of the beast, he's coveted for men and women. You got a blonde hair, blue eyed picture on your mother's wall of a Jewish boy with long straight hair. That is the image of the beast. And black people are trying to emulate the image of the beast. This is why women are weaving hair into their hair so they'll be shoulders so they can shake it like Shirley Temple. And this is why they're straightening their hair with Jerry Curl. We're doing everything to live in the image of the beast. We've got to break that inferiority complex before we can establish ourselves as a people. That's it. We got to learn to love who we are as Africans and what we look like. Remember the white man sees you as pretty. You don't see us driving through white neighborhoods picking up prostitutes. They're downtown driving through black neighborhoods trying to pick up black women. We don't black people lay on the beach. Normally they're on the beach trying to get brown. They go and get their hair permed too. A lot of black people don't know that white people get their hair permed and put in rollers so that they can have Afro looking hair. You're trying to become them and they know that you are in the image of God by their standards. But what they've done is replaced the image of God and gave you the image of a devil. And that's why they push that, that's why all the Christians push that statement in the Bible where Jesus says, when you see me, you see the Father. You see that? You notice Christians push that a lot? Well that's because every picture they have of Jesus looks like them. So when they say that, then they say Jesus is God and when you see me, you see the Father. Then they show you a picture of a white Jesus and that tells you that Jesus is God, God is white and then you must be the devil. It's a subliminal form of brainwashing. This this is from the 56th surah of the Holy Quran, the 8th verse. And read, O oh, sustainer, complete for us our life. And forgive us, for surely you have the power.